Good morning. I want to look at the Pennsylvania coronavirus status for the 27th of July, 2020. Unfortunately, the the weekly death report hasn't been produced. The last one was on the 17th, so it should have been out on the 24th. Maybe it'll be out today. When it is, I'll go over that as well. But here we are at the website again. So if you click the link that says coronavirus outbreak, you'll get to, to this page right here. And I just clicked it earlier because it takes a little while for this figure to download. This is the general figure of what's going on in the state. I'm gonna maximize the screen to make it a little more easily uh, readable. Uh, that sounded really horrible. Make it more readable. <laughs> what I wanna look at is just where the situation is currently in terms of cases. Well, while that's loading, let's go over here, oops, and uh, just go down to the cases. So this is the number of cases right now. You can see there was this peak early in April, and then we went down, and we're starting to have a little bit of a higher increase now here in the southeastern parts of Pennsylvania, as well as in the southwestern part, so I'm not really sure what that's about right now. Well, we'll see what the, what the impact of that is. So I'm mainly concerned on what the impact of these increases are. It could be that at some point, and, and of course we're waiting for a vaccine, and my guess from what we've seen, we're, we're getting into these trials, these large clinical trials with 30,000 people right now, and from the last report I read from the the head of the National Institutes of Health, we had four good trials going on, vaccine trials going on in the United States. And I think across the globe, there's over 112 candidates. I think it's somewhere around that for the coronavirus vaccine. So I'm hoping that by January, maybe sometime in January, we'll have a vaccine. Everything's going a lot faster. We're still going through all the phases, but things are going a lot faster than normal and thankful. I'm very thankful for all the people that are doing that. So right now we have 104,000 confirmed cases in Pennsylvania, 302 probable. Uh, we have 7,178 deaths. So what we, we want to look at is what, basically what the impact of the virus is. So if we see this increase, does that match deaths or are deaths matching that? So you see we had a large number of deaths early and now we're, we're slowing down and almost going to no deaths, which is a good thing. That means I, what I think that means is that we're learning how to deal, two things, we're learning how to deal with that. And in the beginning, the most vulnerable people unfortunately passed away. And the reason was because people weren't paying attention. I don't know what it is in us that it takes time for us to believe something, but by the time we actually start believing, we already lose a lot of lives. We lost a lot of lives here among the most vulnerable. And now it's, it's the death, the mortality rate, as we call it, is very, very low. Uh, if you look, you can actually look at the different parts of the state to see where the worst cases are. Like this is Philadelphia County, 24,955 cases. That's a lot. Say, uh, Bucks County, 6,690 cases. You can go state throughout the state and see where all the cases are. What I'm interested on in is the hospital preparedness. So imagine that everybody gets the coronavirus, but nobody gets sick. Would you be afraid of it? Of course not. I mean, how could you be afraid of something where you, you don't get sick? So what we're worried mostly is if we get ill, and if we're ill, what will happen? Well. In terms of our availability, this is how many patients we have right now in the state of Pennsylvania. 707 coronavirus patients. This many are on ventilators, 97 on ventilators. So uh, I think so this is a different kind of um, oxygen device. I can't see the whole, unfortunately, this whole screen here. But of the 5,000, I believe this is 5,312 ventilators, we have 1,110 are in use, 97 are dedicated to people with the coronavirus. So we have plenty of ventilators. Hopefully we won't need them. I know that ventilators have, have, haven't have really been very helpful 
and have in some ways facilitated deaths because of the damage they do to one's lungs. But this is just one way we judge our preparedness. These are percentages available. Percentages available. So, in terms of adult intensive care unit beds, we have 41 percent available in the state. Surgical beds, 39.6 uh, percent. Pediatric, 21.1 percent. Pediatric ICU and pediatric, 57 percent. Airborne isolation, 68. 69%. So in terms of preparedness in Pennsylvania, we're very well prepared right now. And we haven't really had this surge of cases. Again, I, I think that tells you a lot about the way we're dealing with it. In terms of demographics, it, you can see that it's more it's more uh, uh, on this lower end where people are getting it because these are the individuals who are going out and doing stuff. You can go out. But you just maintain social distance. Like I exercise every day. Now, it doesn't mean that I'm not going to get it. Or, and I go shopping, but when you shop, you go indoors, you wear a mask, you stay away from people who don't wear a mask. Do not confront them because they might get angry, and if they're angry, they're gonna start yelling at you. And if they have the virus, they'll spread it to you through their yelling. Just move away. So I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm really into the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, into the Yi Ching, this old uh, Chinese, system for divining or, or, or for guiding individuals is awesome. I remember when I was younger, I read it, and one, one of the lessons I learned was you don't take unnecessary actions. You wait patiently and preserve your action until a more auspicious time rather than you know at the present. And I do that all the time. If I see a person walking without a mask, I just move away. I have, there's no, no need to fight them. I know my, where the battle should be fought. So that's why you can go places. Like I go, I go hiking a lot. When I go hiking, I, I'm the, rarely near anybody. Now again, I live. I have luxury of having a car, number one, and I live out of the city. Now, if you live in the city, it's a different story. But you can still do it. I mean, there's people who live in the city who are exercising all the time. Just my maintain your social distance. That I mean, it's not that hard. Uh, so this is what we're seeing here. I don't trust the race ethnicity data only because look at the number who did not report their race. I mean, that's that's a lot of individuals. We, we don't really have good data there. We have better data, though, in terms of deaths because that, that's something you can report, obviously. I mean, you don't even need to or somebody can just judge it from from your certificate, death certificate. The majority of deaths are still among the elderly. That's just, that's the way, I mean... I've calculated before that 60 and above are 93% of all deaths in Pennsylvania. 7% are below that, only like 3% are below 50. So most of the people who died were older. And I know we have about 21% African American deaths, which far exceeds the proportion of the population in Pennsylvania. So we still have this really amazing health disparity. We have it in Arizona too with Native Americans. We have it everywhere where there's a large minority population. One of the key indicators though of, uh, one of the key risk factors is obesity. So I, if you are somebody who's obese, you should try to exercise and eat better to try to lose your weight so you can be less risk, not just for the coronavirus, but for whatever other disease happens upon us in the near future. I mean. This is a perfect time to do it. I know it's hard when you're at home, you might want to eat more, but you're also at home and you can regulate what you eat. So it's, there, it, there's, no, there's no excuse. Get healthy right now. All right, thank you, and I hope you had a, a very wonderful day. Bye.